Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blink and Sell Show with Mark. Celebrating its 10-year anniversary, dominating the podcast world. And now, let's welcome your hosts, Blake and Mark. I don't sleep because my head dark father. I hate creeps and I hate liars. Oh, you want the brave cat secret that I never tell. I'm up in heaven, but I came from hell. Uh, hello and welcome to the Better Show with Mark, episode number 459. I'm your host, Blake, and one would think my voice is shot from um, AW Dynamite Rampage. No, I've been scream singing Lincoln Park for five days, so my voice is a little shot from that. Hey, 20th anniversary Meteora, you gotta live with it. The reason the podcast thing is off this week is I gave him the week off because there really isn't much reason for him to be here. He doesn't like doing these recap shows. Anyway, so let's bring on my actual co host, the man, the legend, Mark Dad. How you doing? Doing great. Uh, the show that uh, we went to. Well, we'll get into all I that. Think we'll get into all that in a minute. Very phenomenal. Oh. Okay, Dad, hang on, hang on, hang on. We'll get into all that in a minute. We'll get into all that in a minute. <laughs> Trust me, we'll, we have plenty of time to talk about the show. Um, What I wanted to say was, first okay. of all, we're opening up the show with Darby Allen's music. This is I Fell by Wicked Face Springs Internal. I, I was trying to find a song that, I, that, had, that was a real song so that I can use it on all the social, on our social media. I like using the music, especially on Instagram. And um, figured he was a big part of the show last night. So why not mm-hmm. use I Fell, Darby Allen's music? All right, we'll get into everything in a few minutes. Trust me, we will talk about everything beginning to end. It was a long night, and apparently the show went longer than when we left. And trust me, we'll talk about that in a few. Um, Let's get right into things. By the way, it is gorgeous here. Windows are open, doors are open, everything's open. So if you're any outside noise, that's what's going on there. The other thing is also Christian was sick. So if you hear any coughing in the background, because my microphones are really, 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 really good. That's what's going on in there. So I just say everybody knows that's what's going on. All right. Um, let's get started. Let's just sit right into this. Help support the show and all the You can find the show on our products we work on at thebigatalshow.com. Um, and please sell that. Hey, you can buy our shirts, stickers, hoodies, and more from our T Public store. Click on the T Public link on our website or go to T and search the Blick and Sales Show. And hey, do we have any of our Blick and Sales Show with Mark's uh, bracelets yet? No, but if you want, we can always have um Mandy over at Manda Bands to make them for us. I don't see why not. Plus, don't you have a wristband that I made for you like you? years ago? Good one, I made you a wristband years ago. <laughs> you still got it. Yeah, but there's only three of a kind. I, there's only three of them that's ever been made. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so that is that. Let's go to break. That light is actually available. Let's go to break. We'll come right back. All right, as always. Go pick up Mandy's book. I know I am available right now at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and our Tap Publishing in English and in Spanish. Also, go listen to the Nadine and Mandy Show, part of the Blake Social family, now available every other Friday morning on all podcasting platforms. All right, that I'm is still that. waiting to be their special guest. Don't talk to me. I just edit the show. Don't look at me. I don't book that show. I book okay. this. Show. I book this show. I don't book that show. <laughs> I have nothing to do with okay, that. Okay, all right. I haven't been, been on that show yet, so think about it that way. <laughs> oh, then again, it, it, they recorded head to head with NXT. I rather watch it. I, no offense to the ladies, I'll let them do their thing. I, I'll not watch NXT. So okay, be <laughs> honest with you. So um, all right, um, real fast. Um, real quick, a little bit of Blake and Sal show this week in history. First of all, um. Our first full, like, not just, like, one little throwaway comment here and there, full, like, five-part 
episode of a con coverage that we now do our format now. That we do have two or three episodes, maybe a full episode, two or three episodes every week, every time we do it. The first mm-hmm. time that happened was in 2019. It was by Kyle and Matt, and that was the Winning City Con Windy City Pony Con. So there you go. If you want to know why we do the format we do, blame them. <laughs> <laughs> um also April 13, 2013. I'm actually kind of happy this landed the week um that it dropped. The week that we're doing this because that with our that was, that we did an episode just you and me, all the rest of them interviewing for for a WWE referee, Marty Elias. So that's pretty cool. So Yep, that was. Yeah, so that was that, that was ten years ago. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Um well, that being said, let's we'll get out of there. <laughs> and then we'll hit I that. have one I have one okay. quick question. Go for it. In, in our in our last uh issue, I'll call it Last podcast. Last episode, you, yes. You mentioned the passing of Butch Walker Bush. Um, we might have. I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. We had so much going on last show. I don't remember. But let me just hang on before we do that. And now let's get into the crazy okay. world of professional wrestling. And then all right, there we go. Now we're in the news. So I guess let's start with that. <laughs> um, you know, your ear connection is a little weird. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's the fact that we're next to each other. Maybe the fact that there's a bunch of people home that may have something to do with the internet today. But just so you know, we were a little, 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 little choppy at the moment. Um, before we get into the stuff I want to get into, you brought it up on the passing of Bushwasher Luke. Go. Okay. Yep. Oh. Bushwasher book. Uh, he was at WrestleMania weekend. Last WrestleMania, uh, and from talking to the other talent that was there, he said that uh, he he was doing well. But then um, there was one talent, and, and unfortunately, was tired. That he didn't seem well. Um, and as he was talking to him, he had a medical emergency. They rushed him to the hospital. Uh, he didn't make it. He died at the hospital. And from the information I'm getting, they're saying that it was due to a medication issue, but they're not saying which type of medication. He was doing well up to that, uh, and he was looking forward to finishing out the weekend. Unfortunately, it's not the way that he wanted it to end up be, being in. I remember these guys when they were in Mid South and, and World Class, where they were known as, the sh- and they were taking names. So they've come a long way, and they're Hall of Famers, and uh, my thoughts and friends, and as fans. All right, uh, I'm not in terms of turning on our connection, but hopefully we don't have any more issues as we go along. All right, um. Quick news and notes from the week before we get into AEW. Well, this kind of has to do with AEW, ironically. I didn't expect that when we went into Dynamite this week, but it's what it is. Um, first of all, New Japan, we have two massive title changes, one bigger than the other. Uh, I'll start with the one that's big, but not as big as the first one. And it was Ozzy Open, B. Bushimon, to win the IWDP World Tag Team Championships. Very cool. Very awesome for them to do that. But the big news... The big one did not expect this one. So um Sonata, he um has been like all over the place. He's been he was in the G1 finals, he did all this kind of stuff. Well, he mm-hmm. left the um fact that he's been in for years. Um the idea the um I can never pronounce it right. So I, I, IFJ that we always talk about on here when the fact that I can never pronounce it right with some um, Wilson Governalis de Hapoon? No. Oh well, maybe. I don't know. Wilson maybe. Governalis. You might be right. I oh. can never say it right. I can never say it right. You're right. Well, he left that group. Okay. And he joined the new faction. He joined the, he joined the faction Just Four Guys. It's now called Just Five Guys. I'm not joking. That's the name of the faction. Ain't joking about that whatsoever. And then he shaved off the beard. He got a haircut. Changed his look completely. And then he beat Okada to win the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. I did not see that one coming on any level. Did not expect that. 
Um, Dad, your reaction? I, I'm thinking that uh, Sonata did a lot of soul searching and reflecting and was not going to get him the prize he was. I guess I have to do what's best for me. Left the faction, got a haircut, shaved, changed appearance. And I think he also changed the attitude. And hence, we have the new IWGP world champion. Yeah, it, it's just so weird that the name of the faction is just five guys. That's so weird. Uh, whatever. It's New Japan. Just go with it. Um, The other big news that came out broke right before Dynamite um, was there's going to be a mini tournament um, for the IWGP United States Championship because I'm telling you, Omega, this is not going to Japan to defend it. So they're going to bring the, they're going to bring the title defense to him. Um, so what they're doing is they're having the first match. It's Lance Archer versus Drew Robinson. And then in May, as long as Will Ospreay is back from his injury, it's going to be um, Tanahashi versus Will Ospreay. And then the winners will face mm -hmm. off against each other at Dominion. And then the winner of that match will face Kenny Omega for the title at Forbidden Door. <laughs> Forbidden Door in uh, yes. complicated, yes, in Canada, in Toronto. But that, if, if that is a little complicated, but that is the match that's going to happen. So it kind of makes it's going to be pending the U.S. Championship at Forbidden Door against one of these four men. I think as long as he's healthy, it'll be real Osprey. We'll get a rematch. That's what I think we're getting at. Um, Dad, your thoughts on this little mini tournament? My thing is, Lance Archer and Juice Robinson, I think, will cancel each other out. Uh, there will be heavy hitting and they won't come to a decision. They'll cancel each other out. Whether or not the Switchblade decides supposed to stay here and not in Japan, uh, whether or not, uh, oh, yeah, hey, I, I can help you. I can help you with that. I can help you with that. Switchblade's not allowed in Japan. Okay. He's not allowed in Japan. He's not allowed. Well, I... Throw that out there. Okay. And, and but I'm sure he has friends she and Will Ospreay. Uh that's gonna be a great match. Uh my heart goes with Tanashi, but I think initially Osprey is gonna be the winner, main winner, and you were gonna see an Osprey and Kenny Omega match. At the Forbidden Door. I think the rematch will happen. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna drop you from the call and tell you to come back in and hopefully that makes a difference. To how okay. it is, and then I will get us started on um Ring of Honor. So um as I'm waiting for Dad, as waiting for Dad to get back here, um what actually say this? Um, I, I'm I'm having my issues with this show. Um, the way AEW does their tapings and does their shows, they're long, really, really, really fucking long. And honestly, I have no problem with that. The problem is the show started at what six o'clock, seven o'clock our time. Well, six o'clock our time with the um, bell time for Dynamite at seven. It is a Wednesday night. It is a Wednesday night, and that's the problem people have sometimes. This is a Wednesday night recording, and it's a school night. It's school night. It's a work night. I don't understand why this is, this is the third time we're doing this, and in this show I felt it was longer than them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had Ring of Honor, instead of dark tapings, we had a Ring of Honor taping. Then we had Dynamite, then we had Rampage. Right before Rampage, TK came out, Tony Khan announced there will be more Ring of Honor matches. And I'm like, and we just keep up on the show during Rampage, because we're done. We, we, we were tapped out. Um, too damn long. Too damn long. Um, apparently the show ended around 11.30. <laughs> wow. Like, it's ridiculous how long the show was. Like, way too damn long. And, like, I had so much fun during Dynamite, but this show is too long. Oh, my God. My my thing is, if you're going to do other shows within your, your taping or your airing, you know, at least you should put that on the ticket so people are aware of this because when they're getting a the ticket, they're thinking they're only going to see 
Dynamite and maybe some things from Rampage. Well, they, they announced Dynamite Rampage. That was how it was announced. That's literally how it was announced. Right. right. Like on the commercials. They said nothing about Ring of Honor. So I think a lot of people came in expecting dark matches. Like the last two times we came here, we had dark matches. And for those who never right. know, for, let me just say for those who never went to an AW show, if you've been to WWE shows in the past, they do they do like mid event tapings. That's pretty uh-huh. much the same mentality as dark. On no level that I ever expect to come in is either Ring of Honor logo on the ring apron. Didn't expect that coming in. I didn't expect it. <laughs> I mean, from different wrestling shows that we've gone to, like Super Shows, at least the start time was earlier to kind of balance everything out. And, but when you start at 7 o'clock... Oh, it's 6 o'clock. And it's 6 o'clock with Ring of Honor. 7 o'clock with Dynamite. They started, mm-hmm. I feel like they, we'll get in everything. We'll get in everything. As we go. We'll just start and we'll go from there. Bring them on. Okay. Start us okay. The, bring them on. Start us off. Okay. And we, you and me, are experienced with bring them on shows. We've been doing it for years. So for someone like me, mm-hmm. I'm excited because, like, we went to many bring them on shows and it's nice to see the logo back. It's nice to see mm-hmm. the letters back in play. And I have zero mm-hmm. with that. No problem with it. Zero problem with that. But my issue has nothing to do with that. It's the fact that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven matches <laughs> in 45 minutes. And like, what? Two of them meant something? Maybe two of them? Maybe three tops? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I I have my issues with that, personally. But um, here's what we'll do. I'll run down the matches. And then we'll talk about it the whole because it's just easier and faster that way. Um, the Kingdom, Darius Martin and and and, and Action Andretti, Willow Nightingale, one of Mandy's favorite wrestlers in the entire world, came out, but that was fun. They defeated one of the one of the Renegade trends. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know which one it was. Robin, they did, did, Robin Renegade, thank you. And then they, um, yeah. I didn't care. That's the problem. I didn't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they did like twin magic during the match. Willow still won, and then the both of them. Attack Nightingale, so I guess we're doing something tag team related for them, which is disappointing because Willow was in a was a number contender for Athena, and now she's in a tag team view with the Renegade side. That's, that's kind of disappointing. Um, Lance Archer, for those who have never seen the Lance Archer intro, that was like total classic Lance Archer. Him coming out carrying his local competitor to the ring, doing the full entrance, and then doing a quick match, and then leaving. <laughs> that I really enjoyed. Um. Brian Cage defeated local talent Joe Jett. Um, 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 we had a Ring of Honor Women's Championship. Um, what was this? A, a, a number, no, 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 um, a challenge match, and it was Athena. Um, defeating local um Heather Ruck, Heather Reckless. Um, then we had I, I went to the bathroom during this not because there's women because I had to go to the bathroom, and um. I came back and the Iron Savages mm-hmm. are on their way to the ring, and I have no clue what these people are. So they came to the ring and they defeated I... people. Good. Good. Christian asked me the same question Who are these guys? And I had to tell him, I have no idea. These are the first I've heard about the Iron Savages. And from what I can tell, it looks like they're manager or their partner they seem like they were like gym rants or something that basically decided to break into the world of professional wrestling yeah i didn't get it um and then we had the main event which was the oh well, before we get to the main event we had the hilarity of um bobby cruz telling everyone we're now going to record the intro <laughs> which cracked me up not gonna lie and then we had um, Paul Cabana come out to face Samoa Joe for the Ring of Honor Television Championship. Obviously, Samoa Joe retained because they're not going to do a title change, despite what everyone in the building thought. So that was Ring of Honor. Dad, your thoughts on these weird mm-hmm. lineups that we watched for the first 45 minutes of our taping? Um, the one that really seemed out of place to me was uh the iron savages and the uh Brian Cage match. I mean uh because now they 
the information came out that Cage has re-signed with AEW, but actually no, for my next he signed with Ring of Honor, from what I'm hearing. Oh, Ring of Honor, okay. Yeah. But uh, you know, for him to come out and be joined, I mean, it's, it's it seems out of place because um usually there's an entourage with Brian Cage, but at this time there oh, was they just... were there. They were there. They were there wherever they had Prince Nana. Yeah, yeah. Him. yeah, he had him and them. The, the, yeah, that would you know. That was, but it just seemed like it was kind of uneventful. Like it, 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 it was more like a filler type of situation. No, I agree. I agree. Um, about that, you asked the question, and when this is being aired, I have no idea. I, I we'll find out when, when everyone else finds out. I have zero clue. There if you this, go. If this is um, we're recording this on um Thursday. Obviously, the day after a new year is on Friday, so you'll know before we you'll know if this is on Thursday night's Ring of Honor show. I'll find out on Friday when I'm doing laundry. I usually watch Ring of Honor when I'm doing laundry, so I will find out. That. Um, well, that's that. So then we had like a 15 minute break between Ring of Honor and AW. That included um, MJF playing a promo on Milwaukee, which is was hysterical, which then led to a um, beer and beer and cheese chant. The rest had the rest of the evening, which. Not gonna lie, it's hysterical. I think I titled this episode "Beer and Cheese" is the name of this episode, and um, I, I gotta admit that was really funny. Mm-hmm. I, I have to. You, okay, you you rewatch the dynamite. Did that chant make it on the air during the MJF segment at all? At the end of the match, okay. That's when you hear the chance, but before that, no. Okay, I didn't think so. I because I felt like okay, we'll get into it now. So we open up the show. Oh, well, then Tony mm-hmm. Khan came out. And he did his spiel. Okay. Mm-hmm. If someone could please get in Hunter Tony Khan, I have zero problem with him coming out and doing the whole spiel, open the show. I, I don't care. I think it's cool. Good for him. He's mm-hmm. going to learn. You don't yell. Okay. For those listening, I apologize now. I'm just doing my impression of Tony Khan. Okay. This thing. You don't hold the microphone up and yell into it like this. You bring it back like we're doing, like I just did. And then you, you want to yell, bring the microphone out. Don't bring it up to your mouth like this and yell. And then no one can understand what you're saying. <laughs> maybe maybe Tony has a soft voice and that's the only way to get it to... Then, then, then talk normal. That's fine. But if you're holding the microphone to your mouth, don't yell. Or you, no one in the building will understand what you're saying. <laughs> Nobody will get it. Like I, I feel like the last time he did not do that. I don't know what happened here and why he did that this time. But like, well, holy crap. You know... I, I know that Tony gets excited for the product and for the show and how he wants the whole thing to go well so everyone's happy. I get that. But when you have like an over enthusiasm and you're trying to kind of project that and all people are are, are, are focused in and what do you say? What do you say? Exactly. Okay. And, and we're That's just it. You know. Just so people know, we were sitting right by the entrance ramp, two rows up in route tw- in, in section two twenty two. For those who don't know the area, it's not that bad. But as a matter of fact, if you're on YouTube, you see the picture that I have in my background. That's not zoomed in. That was how far we were from the stage. So we're not that far from the stage. So we were able to hear stuff that most people in the building weren't able to hear. But we still don't understand what the hell was saying. And, so, and when when they had the pyro, we felt the heat. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Um, although I do want to laugh before we get into the show that Justin Roberts did the full entrance and video package, but Hall of Famer Excalibur, Taz, and Tony Giovanni do not. <laughs> that is funny to me. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe Justin Roberts has got some pull with Tony. I don't know. I don't know. It just made me chuckle. At that thing. I remember, like, a WWE shows when we had the announcements, all the announcers got their own entrances, all that kind of stuff. And, I thought it was funny that Excalibur just went into the um, Independent Wrestling Hall of Fame. And he didn't think it was a entrance, but Justin Roberts gets his whole entrance. I, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so we get into the show. We um, So for those w- wondering, if you go on Instagram, it should be up by now because I just haven't had... I, for those wondering, we got home late, had to sleep, and I had to work. So literally, I'm doing this right after my shift. So I have not had time to store them to the pictures and put them up on the Like a South Show Instagram page yet. So once I do that, it should be up on the time the show drops. Just so everybody knows that. So you can go there and see all the pictures. I just haven't had time to do it yet. But um, 
we open up with um Darby Allen, which was a nice surprise, very nice surprise mm-hmm. for him out. And he had what a hell of a match with Sore Swick, Sore Strickland to open up the show. Mm-hmm. My whole my issue, my issue is this. And I said this watching Dynamite. When you have three men that are feuding with MJF, with Darby, Sammy, and and Jack Perry, mm-hmm. none of them can lose right now. So it kind of hurts the matches right. when you know that those three men right mm-hmm. now can't lose. Like it kind of hurts a little bit, but it's fine. It was a hell of a match. Um, and then right after the show, okay, so you have to tell me because you rewatched it. I haven't had a chance to rewatch it yet. In the building, in the building, we had the match. And then we had MJF's music kit. And then here in the building, I know this is in the air, but I'm just telling people that happened in the building. MJF comes mm-hmm. out and then leaves. <laughs> Cut the promo in the back again. I'm picking on Milwaukee. And then comes back out. And that's where we had the um, beer and cheese chant. And then he mm-hmm. gets in the ring. And then he starts talking. The, I'm going to guarantee none of that aired on television. <laughs> Um, the him going to the back, no, coming down back, yes, and then he gets into his his promo, and then basically, when he gets to one point where he says, "Now I'm MGF and I'm," and basically the crowd finished his finished his catchphrase, which kind of offended him, which that was, was cool. his, that was fun, that was fun, which though. was the whole topic of his promo. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Um, I have to give credit where it's due. I'm I love Darby Allen. I know a lot of people don't like him. I know I know her back. A lot of people don't like him as a person, mm-hmm. as a character. This promo that he cut on this show might be one of the best ones he's ever done, mm-hmm. and might have been a career maker for him. So mm-hmm. this was fantastic. Like personal stories, talking about his family, talking about therapy. Talking about real life, like I thought this was one of his best promos he's ever cut in his career. <laughs> I mean, this this shows you a little bit of background, not only about Darby, but some of the things within a promotion like AEW, where yeah. basically, you know, there's pressure to be competitive, there's pressure to be number one contender, there's pressure all over the place. And like Darby said in his promo that, you know, I had to be smiling on the outside, but I was sad on the inside. Yeah. And that's when he decided. Yeah. That's that's when he decided he needed help, which was great. He recognized that problem and wanted to get help. And he did. So here's my, my, my soapbox. Anybody that has, a mental health problem or a lot of mental health days, do not, and I'll repeat, do not be afraid to ask for help. It's there for you. It's there for your benefit. Take advantage of it before something that you start out with that's simple becomes more problematic and worse. So please get the help that you need that's available. Okay, you're gonna. I'm quickly because I don't usually plug books I'm listening to or listen to or whatever. I actually just finished a book right before we went to Dynamite. I just finished an audiobook and it was actually a romance mm-hmm. novel, but it's actually important to what you just brought up because not 80 percent of the book had to do with mental health and like suicide thoughts and how to fight that and how to deal with it and therapy and all that stuff. So, I recommend on um, the book Bring Me Back by um Christopher Granada. Um, I just, I just finished it yesterday, it was really, really good and um. Not enough sex, my personal opinion, but that's a whole different story. But as for what you're talking about, and the whole conversations and everything else, it's a really good book with that topic in it. So very recent. It, it actually got five stars from a, a, a Instagram a Insta books a, a book account that I follow, which is why I listened, which is why I downloaded it. But um, really good. Just wanted to recommend that. Um, real fast, and then uh, and to our surprise, I did not expect this one. Was um, um MJF said that Darby is um Sting's bitch, and all of a sudden. Sting ran out. I did not expect this. It was a nice surprise. Let me just, okay, before we get to Sting, I did to vent about something. You, you mentioned your thing. I had to vent about something that happened. So, like I said, we're, we're sitting pretty good. We have pretty damn good seats for what we paid for it. The way the arena mm-hmm. set up, though, 
You know how most WWE shows you have screens everywhere? Well, the way the arena is set up and where we're sitting, we really can't see the screens that are set up, which is fine because we have great seats to the ring. Not an issue. I'm not complaining about that whatsoever. My problem had nothing to do with the arena setup. It had to do with this dumbass <laughs> who randomly, for no reason, during this segment, during MJF and Darby, walks down the walks down our section and stands right in front of me and Mandy. So we can't see what's going on to the point where Mandy yelled at him <laughs> to get out of our way. And we figured maybe he's just looking for a seat or maybe he would wait to the show. Then he gets on the phone and starts pointing at somebody across the way. Then he leaves after the segment. I have no idea what this is about. I have no idea what happened here. <laughs> but the asshole just stood right in front of us. <laughs> I, I'm i assuming, and I could be wrong, but I'm assuming that if you're on the phone and you're pointing in a direction, that's probably where you should be sitting. Exactly. And you're a hell of a lost person. So, so that could have ruined this segment a little bit for me. Oh, and before that, I forgot to bring this up. During the Ring of Honor mm-hmm. tapings, um, the guy behind me, accidentally, I'm hitting in the head by accident, and my head was hurting during this whole segment as well. So I was not exactly in the best of spirits when this thing was going on, because I really got hit in the head, and I had this asshole blocking my view. So, And for a six foot four person to complain about somebody blocking their view, that says a lot. <laughs> so anyway, um, this thing comes out, and everyone's happy. And he cuts this great promo again um, um, against MJF and defending Darby. I thought that was really, really awesome. And then, mm-hmm. so I'm listening to the um, White Color Prostate podcast this morning. I wanted to hear the read people talk about the show, obviously. And they had live callers and all that kind of stuff. And they mm-hmm. dropped a, something that I never thought of. They're trying to fill up Wembley. The Wembley, the Wembley Stadium show. And we're all in. And they threw out an idea. For a one night only shit match. Because the all in was, if everyone remember the all in, it was the uh-huh. we're gonna do matches we've never seen before. We're gonna do one night, not gonna matter in the mm-hmm. long run matchups. Somebody threw off right. it. And Sting's retiring more than likely this year. Correct. I, That's what the rumblings are. Yeah. Oh, the rumblings are coming from him. The rumblings are not rumbles. They're coming from him. Um, right. You do. As he put it, he doesn't know how much longer show time will, will oh, be going even, on. Even before he said that on the show, he'd been talking about it off air. That's, that's not new mm-hmm. information. So somebody threw out there an idea at Wembley. MJF versus Sting. <laughs> and Sting would not win. Sting would put over MJF. But that would be something special you could do at Wembley to sell the card. Uh, yeah. Uh, definitely. <laughs> I, I, um, I heard that I like here's, I have here's, here. here's the thing that I'm looking at and I'm I'm sure you're gonna sell tickets, especially if that's on the card. And I don't expect this match to be scientific hold for hold. Oh hell no. I, oh, hell no. I, I, I expect it to be a battle. I expect it to be bloody, and I expect somehow that the diamond ring will make an appearance. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously. obviously. You know, but, but, but like, here, on paper, though, you do MDF mm-hmm. thing, that's something interesting. Oh, oh, that, I, and and I think what it will do, it was would be also kind of a way for not only Sting to say, you know, kind of like his farewell or start his farewell, but kind of look at it as these younger men and women that are in the business this is what they can do pay attention to them because they have a good support system in place and they're going to go places all right let's move on because um dynamite moves fast we should we should too um our next thing <laughs> um silas jung comes out during the commercial um local local guy i love him absolutely love the guy yep matter of fact if you ever consider our old wrestling intro the old one we replayed actually on the anniversary show mm-hmm. Where we have the um, we are average chant that came from a Ring of Honor show when Silas Young called Milwaukee ha- ha- average because he was trying to get heel in Milwaukee, and Milwaukee fans would not let him be a heel. Nope, <laughs> not, him nope. Be a heel. not at all. Um, so, yeah. Um, he comes out and he gets killed by Powerhouse Hobbs. Um, I have zero issues with Powerhouse Hobbs being champion. I think it's actually a really cool idea. Good for him. He gets a good push. Mm-hmm. I cannot yeah. stand his faction. I cannot stand Q- QT Marshall. I cannot stand QTD. I can't stand any of it. 
Um, I here's the th- I don't get it. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, I I don't get how QT is helping Powerhouse in any way. I mean, he's there. I mean, is he a big support person for this guy? No. I, I think he's there for, for QT and to get noticed and his QTZ TV, whatever the hell it is, QT. that mimics TMZ is bullshit. Which, by the way, I have zero problem with something making fun of TMZ. I have zero problem with it. I think that's actually mm-hmm. a cool idea because I'm surprised it hasn't been done before. I'm honestly surprised it's never been done. But doing having QT Marshall doing it is awful. Like, for instance, if RJ City was doing it, as much as I can't stand him, at least we had the personality to pull it off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We get the personality to do it. Like I said, I can't stand the guy, but at least I understand it. You know? But anyway, um, so post match, um, there so okay, apparently there was some confusion listening to some reviews this morning. Apparently, mm-hmm. we saw more in the building than was actually on, than actually was seen on television. So I'll explain what happened here. Okay. Um, Oh, you know, on TV. Tell me what we saw on TV first, and then I'll tell you what we saw in the building. That either. Um, what was on TV that we didn't get a chance to see? Well, or we, was not it's a combination of things here. Like it's a weird situation with this whole segment. Like, <laughs> okay, and it wasn't even talked about. We had no. Is that earlier before the show, Powerhouse Hobbs parked the car that QT Marshall had given him in a specific spot uh, with the velvet ropes and the guy saying, oh, give, him the, so he gave him the keys and said, yeah. He says, and he says, he gives him the keys and basically says, watch my car and it better be here when I get back. Got it. And, and, okay, and, got it. and the guard is doing everything. You know, from waxing it to whatever to make sure the car is intact. So when Powerhouse gets back, he can drive off. Got it. Okay, now it makes sense. Well, on the on our end, we had no clue that happened. None of us saw that. And, um, but by the way, can you show everything to us so we know what the hell's going on storyline-wise? That'd be great. Um, so we don't see that. What we do see is um, Hobbs, um, Aaron Solo, and QT Marshall attacking Tyler Jung. And they're going to power bomb him off the stage. And apparently, what they didn't show on television that we saw in person was Aaron Solo on the floor sitting up the tables. Um, so we saw that in front of us. And we're literally, for those wondering, because I put a video up on my TikTok of this because that's how sober, sober we were, how close we were. We saw all of this right in front of us. So we have this go on, and then the then this whole hop, then this whole world load thing world load comes on the screen, and um Shows us the car and then destroys the car and then tips it. I guess tips it over. Tips it over with a forklift and then weird shit happens. Um, so the car is destroyed, and then my hilarious for me was Perhas Hobbs watching it and reacting while Aaron Solo was on the floor setting up tables. Like, <laughs> oh, this is going on while there's a little video of tables that nobody on television knew about. Mm-hmm. And according to reports I heard, they're like, "Why are the random tables set up on the floor? Because you didn't see him get set up like we did." And um, so then Warlow comes out, and Hobbs and him go at it. Hobbs gets away with QT after a bunch of people come out to um stop this, and but but um Warlow gets his hands on Solo, and throws him through tables. But here's the problem: only went through one table, and then Solo hit his head on the other table. The other table did not break. Boy, I hope the guy didn't get concussion. As much as I don't really like him, I hope mm-hmm. he didn't get a concussion from that. And uh, and, and, and here's the. Karma part is he set the tables up. I know, and as exactly. I'm watching, as I'm watching him, he does not have the tables set side by side. No, he's got one underneath the other, and I'm not sure. No, no, no they were for... they, they weren't stacked. They weren't stacked. They were side to side. They were side to side. Right, but the thing, one of the the tables, as he set it up, got underneath the other one as they were stacked, and. I don't know why he did that and this was for, you know, to brace or, or to, to restructure. But as he went through the table, yeah, he only hit that one. I just sent you the video. The I just sent you the video that I put up. I, I just sent you the video I put yeah. up. You can be watch it right now from our angle. And um yeah. definitely banged his head 
on the second table, and I really do hope he's okay. Like all joking aside, yeah. hope he's all right. <laughs> Doc Sampson was there, and it looked like he had uh, some issue. Whether or not it led to anything else, I have no idea. Neither do I. Um, so next up, we um we go to commercial. We come back, and before we get to our next match, they know how to clean up the table. And the hilarious part for us watching them clean up the table, or they clean up the table, and then they realize they don't have the time to like sweep up the rest. Which, by the way. Can we get on that kind of stuff? Because WWE is so fast with the kind of this kind of kind of shit. Mm-hmm. They realize they don't have the time, so they literally pull out a rug and they cover it up with everything. So an AW rug randomly is sitting there now for the rest of the night. Which, by the way, I think I think some people tripped on when they were leaving in the ring. He, he the did. So next they up, did. next up, we have an AW Intercontinental Championship match. Um, Buddy Matthews comes out with Julia, with um Julia Hart. And um, I have to say, the mystique of the House of House of the um, House of Black entrance is really, really bad when you watch it from our seats because you can see everything going on. So there really is no mystique anymore when this goes down. So, and then, so I love Art Cassidy. Love the guy. Have for a very long time, and I have for a very long time. But the, I, it simply changed the theme music to Jane, which I love the song Jane. We, we opened up the show with it. Couple weeks back. Yep. I love the song, Jane. I've never seen his entrance in person, obviously. First time we're seeing his entrance. Mm-hmm. TV does not do justice to Orange Cassidy's entrance. <laughs> it does not do it justice. No. No. They, uh, they need to play. So what's cool about it for me, so I was going to describe this from my point of view, because I don't even know okay. what you know, but I, I pay attention to the little details of the stage. I love the details of watching the stage and watching the lighting. Mm-hmm. Which is why the House of Black entrance is now kind of like, ruined because we see the surprise, we see the secret behind it now. Mm-hmm. Art Cassidy's music hits, and he had to come out for a minute because they want to hit the hook. What I've never, you don't see on television, and I didn't know this, at the awesomeness of the lighting effects on the stage during his entrance, like the lighting mm-hmm. effects, the yellow lighting, and the co- coordination of the lights and everything. Like, I've never seen mm-hmm. that before. Like that was awesome. That was so freaking cool. <laughs> and, and I, I think on the sides of the ramp, it also did that. And my thing is, is, is that makes the entrance that yeah, basically uh, kind uh, of you know the, the showmanship, if you want to see it. Yeah, I really liked way. it a lot. I liked it a lot. I didn't expect that entrance. I thought that was really cool in person. And then we had a damn entertaining match between Aaron Cassidy and Buddy Matthews. This match had no right to be this damn good. And I know both of them are extremely talented, but this, this match had no right to be this damn good. Um, well, storyline is obviously, if you um, missed it, he, um, we're selling the whole uh, Aaron Cassidy broken hand angle from last Wednesday or last Friday. I don't, I forgot what the hell day that happened. And um, Wednesday. Thank you. I, I say that, but I watch so much wrestling, I forget what day things happen on half the damn time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna watch it. I don't remember. And um, and also, the problem also comes with Rampage and Battle of the Vaults last week. Um, I admittedly was high, and I know I fell asleep and missed the last half hour of Battle of the Belts. Don't remember what happened. I don't want to go back to it, because I have no interest. But I don't remember the last, I did not see the last half hour of Battle of the Belts. Um, but anyway, Art Cassidy, Buddy Matthews, um, this match is great. Oh my god. I can't say a bad thing about it. It was entertaining. It was fun. It was exciting. And I almost believe Buddy Matthews is actually going to take the belt off of him with the whole injury angle they were doing. But at the end of the day, despite all the DDTs and RN punches and everything else, it was the mousetrap schoolboy that Aaron Cassidy pinned Buddy Matthews to retain the championship. This match was, his crowd was going crazy. So into this. Um, Ted, your thoughts? It was... <laughs> It was a great match, and it basically was there for a reason, for people to get excited, entertained, and into the show, which they did. And here's the thing that a lot of people may not notice about Buddy Matthews, okay? The TV TV doesn't do him justice. When you see him in person and he takes off that robe, his body is chiseled. I mean, we're talking physique. We're talking... Like he spends time in the gym to basically get that way, and and you don't get to see that on on, on television, no. and you would think that you know he would be one of these guys that muscle bound and can't move. He can move. He can do a lot of things. It, he will surprise you, 
And he basically, he basically looks like a heavyweight, but moves like a middleweight. I agree. Which is, you know, how. And 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 then you know to capitalize on Orange's hand injury and you know to to, to bang it in be you know on like the the turnbuckle styles and and bend it the wrong way and have Doc Samson it was a come great down story. and everything. It was a great story. They did a great job. I mean, it, it, it 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 basically stuck to the storyline from start of the match to the finish of the match. And I, I always say I love a good story, and they told a great story in this. Oh match. yeah. Um, right, which which makes you believe for Orange's next defense, whether or not his hand will be healed enough I to go. I agree. Um, next up, we had um all these Eastern Page come out, and um the crowd didn't care. Ooh. Okay, we just we don't have to do that bit. We're gonna have plenty of time okay. to do that later. Well, plenty of time to do that. People, but it'll actually matter. Trust me, we'll get to that. But not we should because he dead. I know you're making a joke, but everyone knows who Ethan Page is. It's not like everyone knows who he is. But um, anyway, my whole point was the crowd didn't seem to care because they don't care about the storyline. It doesn't they don't care about Ethan Page. They don't give a shit about the firm and Matt Hardy and private party and their contracts. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. Um, as proven by the crowd and nobody caring. Um, until Matt Hardy and Isaiah Cassidy came out and the delete chance started and all this kind of stuff. And I thought it was weird that Matt and Isaiah came out without music. And I thought that was kind of weird. Um, but again, I didn't think anything of it in the moment. Then um, e- um, Ethan Page calls out with, um, the rest of the firm and Big Bill and Lee Murray, but I hate that name, Big Bill. I hate that name. Um, mm-hmm. They attack Hardy and Cassidy. And then um, to CJ's delight, um, hook music hit, and um, he came out to help say to help out Matt and Isaiah, and then um, he gets beat up by um, the firm, and then out of nowhere, I, and apparently there was rumors going around all day, but I was working and avoided. I wasn't online all day, so I had no clue there was rumors going around all day. But um, the Hardy music hit, and Jeff Hardy comes out, surprising everybody in the building. Everyone goes crazy. Um. Uh, can I say I appreciate him not dancing on the stage and not running down the ramp like last time? He didn't just dance on the stage and not save his brother. But um, he went down. We had the Hardy reunion. Um, mm-hmm. and then we had again. I I need to know if this is on the air. If you have to tell me because I haven't watched it back yet. But um, if the okay. if Hook dancing with Isaiah and the Hardys made the air, did that make the air? Uh, somewhat, but not all of it. Okay, because that was for me one of my favorite parts of this whole segment with Hook. And Manny said it perfectly. It's Hook fanboying. He's fanboying at the Hardy. I couldn't believe it. I mean, you you had Isaiah Cassidy trying to do the Jeff Hardy dance, and I think Matt stopped him. But my, but my favorite part was Hook, who never breaks character for any reason. Mm-hmm. Broke character to be a Hardy fanboy. I was like, this is yeah. amazing to watch. Like, this is, I, I mean, got it. And it was a really cool moment. I, when. Jeff's music hit. No one expected it, and you had the big crowd pop, and him coming down the way he did. I, it it was perfect. It, it, you know, a chair in hand coming down, trying to basically save his brother and his friends. And I have to admit, Jeff looked great. He looked in good shape. He looked like he didn't have any type of ring rust. And well, all I gotta say about Jeff, and I'm not gonna get into it. I'm not gonna okay. do that because I want to keep going. I hope he's all right, and I hope he's sober, and we don't have to deal yeah. with it again in six months. Yeah, like we yeah. have like every right. year, at least once a year for the last seven years. I don't want to deal with it again. I'm not. I'm not going to do that soapbox. I don't want to go off on a tangent, but I just hope. Right. right. Okay. Mm. So am I. So do I. And I, I think uh, he had discussions with Matt, and I think everything. I hope as no. of right I, now I, you know be corrected. We have done this before, so I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, okay. Moving on, we um, have a promo on the screen from Kenny Omega, and um, we didn't hear half of it because the Hardys' music was still playing, and they forgot to turn the sound up for a little while. <laughs> oh, so we missed mm-hmm. half the promo in the building, but whatever, it didn't matter. He was saying he's going to go out to the Blackpool Combat Club, and we'll get to that next. The Blackpool Combat Club comes out, and um, they come to the arena. I got awesome videos and pictures of this. 
um, John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli. They had their match, and Miller Yuta came out with them. Mox, by the way, the entrance came up, and he was literally right in front of us. And uh, Manny lost her damn mind, but be- um, started beating up my shoulder, and my shoulder still hurts. Um, <laughs> so we have this. They come out, and they do their thing. And um, they destroy, and I put destroyed in the notes, because that's what this was. They destroyed um, Michael Nakazawa and Brandon Cutler of the of the um, being the elite crew. This was dumb and stupid in my personal opinion. But the whole point of this was to now call out the elite. And um, Ken Omega came out. I realized we didn't see Ken Omega the last few shows because he was hurt. So it wasn't. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't see him at the last show. We didn't see him at the last show because he was hurt. So I didn't see Ken Omega come out. And um, and then and then from behind, Young Bucks attacked. In the ring, I didn't even see them get in the ring. I was kind of trying to get on Omega, but um, they get in the ring and they attack, and so we have the elite against the Blackpool Combat Club, and um, I'm excited for this feud. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really excited for this, and that was that. Um, thoughts? Um, I think the storyline has kind of made it evident and clear that the two uh, factions are gonna cross. They're going to basically have their match. It's going to be a battle back and forth. Uh, I I think it's going to be, there's going to be some bloodshed. Uh, there may be an injury, but this is the way the storyline is going to play out. And I'm telling you right now, when they sign this match, it is going to be for the benefit of the fans. I, I have a feeling we're going to be leading to something like a um, blood and death match. At this point, it wouldn't shock me. You know, I thought they were leading. I didn't get mad. I have a feeling this is the one you got mad. It's going to be Black Hawk Combat Club and the Elite. I, yeah, I, I think that's where it's headed to. Um, and here's the thing: no I think the match would end up being it would end up being Mox, Claudio, um, Brian, Yuta, and then it would be Kenny, the Bucks, and Hangman. So that'd be four on four. Yep. Right there, you go. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, hopefully, Don is going to be in the corner. Oh, yeah, obviously. All right. Um, next up, we had um Rio and Sky Blue come out for a match, and um nobody cared. Um, <laughs> the Outcasts came out, and um Tony Storm and Ruby, Ruby Soho with Soraya, and again nobody cared. Unfortunately, nobody cared. Um, a funny part is Mandy asking for the time. It was eight thirty on the button, and the joke is the women's sandwich are always at eight thirty, and this lived up to the bill. It was um it happened. It was a thing. The match was quick. Outcast won. The one thing I'll give credit to was I don't again, I don't know what it but aired what didn't, but Soraya was playing to the crowd and she started spray painting fans in the crowd and a fan and like she yeah. went after a child and a parent almost jumped the barricade to attack her. Like it was crazy in the arena. Yeah. yeah. Um so that was at least what was actually, actually that was more entertaining than the match was. Um <laughs> Um, Tony, you know, I said Tony Ruby, Tony Ruby won. The only thing people behind me were complaining that Ruby Soho really didn't hit, so that was that. Uh, post match, mm-hmm. um, Jamie Hader came out and then she got beat down, and then Britt Baker came out and saved the day. I have no idea why they didn't come out, why they came, did not come out together. Zero clue. That was weird to me, but that's that. Um, remember the next week's show is in Pitt, is in Pittsburgh, so Britt is um is in a match against the Outcast next week. Mm-hmm. So that's that. Any thoughts on all this weirdness? Um, <laughs> I I think what it's going to come down to is that you're going to have to have a match with the Outcast versus Jamie Hader and her entourage. Now, here's the thing: who's going to be the woman that's going to be in that entourage? What happened to Sheeta? Where did she go? Wasn't she involved in this feud originally? Originally, yeah, Hikaru Shido was, the, was supposed to be there, but I haven't seen her lately, and I haven't heard any rumblings about sure her about, or, yeah. or what's happening. So, I mean... You can throw I Willow in there. Know. Willow's involved in this, too. You can throw Willow in there. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't know whether or not she's coming back or what's happening or she injured or what, but, yeah, you could put Willow in there. Willow would, 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 would do really well, and, uh, you know... Let's get it on. Let's get it done. All right. Um, main event. Um, Chris Jericho came out. Crowd was saying Judas. What's um Daniel Garcia? Again, the crowd saying Judas. That's what you expect. Um, 
Then came out Keith Lee. The crowd went crazy. I was happy to see him. And then the match happened. And boy, was I disappointed. Um, <laughs> this wasn't good. This was not good at all. I give Jericho credit all the credit of the world for selling the crap out of things. This was not a good match at all. I thought the chemistry was way off. And maybe the fact that um, Keith Lee's big guy and Jericho's old, it just didn't work for me personally. I a lot of the people were into it. I was kind of bored. As much as I love both guys, I am wearing my Keith Lee t-shirt from WWNXT right now, actually. But I don't know. I was kind of bored during this match. Um, afterwards, um, Daniel Garcia and Daniel Garcia really got involved. Apparently, um, Swerve came out and hit Keith Lee in the head with something. We didn't see it from our angle. Um, and ironically, mm-hmm. nobody cared in the building to find out what was going on. And um, I find it very, we could very easily jump on YouTube TV on my phone and check, but we didn't bother. And um, mm-hmm. Jericho won, and then Adam Cole came out to um conf- to check on Keith Lee, and then we teased the Adam mm-hmm. Cole Jericho match, which I'm gearing. I guess they were doing a double or nothing at this point because we're not like taking your thinking we have time to get there. Um, did you yes, have your opinion, I, I, did you have opinion I, on this match? Because I, I I don't know. You know what, what's really strange for me is to see this. I, I hate to say newer version, but other version of, of Keith Lee where. The hair's completely gray. The beard's completely gray. And he seems his uh, fighting spirit or attitude is somewhat contained. But to me, and I'll say it again, he looks like this big type of bear that, you know, you would see in the woods. And I think that's how he, he perceives himself as like a big bear. And he basically slaps it. And he claws and he pounces and he does what a big type of person like him does best is use his momentum against his opponent. But here's the <laughs> thing with Jericho. Oh, so slow. I know. I, I, I think that Keith would want the match faster pace, but here's the thing. If you go too fast, there's a likelihood that with Jericho, that it may lead to an injury, but that's all. That's my perception of it. So we're and, you know, no offense. That the Keith Lee was slow. That's what we're doing. <laughs> you know, I I think I, I, don't, I, I just still... don't follow your logic because Jericho usually moves a lot faster than his matches. I'm following. I'm having problem following Co- your logic. Co- co- correct, but I think everything was done to make sure no one was injured. At that, like, what's the point of doing it? Perception. What's the point of doing it? If you're worried about injury, oh. why, why, why why do the match? Why bother? Because because. Because here's the thing, we usually see Jericho doing more and other things, but oh, with I this agree. match, th- yeah, that didn't happen. And whether or not he was injured or Keith Lee was injured or something else, I think was brought was brought up, not not by to the fans, but was brought into how the match progressed. And I, and I think people want to see the more aggressive Keith Lee. The more angry Keith Lee, the more powerful Keith Lee, and that match, we didn't see that. So before we get to Rampage, I just got some breaking sports news. I just want to break here real fast. Go ahead. It came across my phone. Um, the Watch of the Commanders just got sold. Um, <laughs> Dan Snyder just sold the Washington Commanders. To a um a group um, um that is led by Josh Harris, who owns the Philadelphia 76ers and the New Jersey Devils, um that also includes Magic Johnson for six billion dollars. That just happened, like it just broke as we're sitting here. Six, six billion dollars. Yes, that just broke as we're sitting here. So there you go. Holy, watch the creator. Holy, <laughs> holy stinky. So that just so happened. Does that mean <laughs> so? So Magic is now a part owner of the Washington Commanders. Yeah, and Josh Harris, who owns the Devils. And the San Franciscans are now also part of this. This is weird. So that just broke. Well, there you go. That literally just broke as we're sitting here. That just popped up. Pat McAfee just tweeted about that literally seconds ago. So let's just throw that out there. Well, that time well, thank you for that. That time types the show. So, okay. Let's get back to this. Thank Rampage. You, we had like a 10-minute break between Dynamite and Rampage because they had to set the reset the ring out. And um, during Dynamite, they had a whole thing of the Best Friends Challenge, Aussie Open, which one of the more hilarious promos I've seen in a while where they said, come, to J- come from Japan and come to Milwaukee to face us on Rampage. As in the people in the building don't realize that we're doing this on the same night. Mm-hmm. Boy, that sounded stupid. That sounded really dumb. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so everyone's like, oh, cool, Aussie Open's here. So we had Aussie Open come out 
and they face off against the best friends for the IWGW Jesus Christ, the IWGP World Tag Team Championships. Um, I thought this match was. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention. Spoiler alert for those who are one on rampage today. I just really, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Spoiler alert, people that are watching through our shows the first thing when it drops on Friday morning and um Friday night rampage. Sorry about that. I forgot to mention that at the top of this. Um, but anyway, um, Ozzy opened a few of the best friends to defend the IWGP World Tag Team Championships. Um. I thought this was great. The problem I had again with unpredictability. Um, if you're predictable, then you know I was open to him, but I thought this was great. Um, Dad? Oi, oi, oi! Oi, oi, oi! The crowd got into us. I, I'm sorry. The crowd just got into them. Uh, and I think they were backing them, or most of the crowd was backing them. And this team, I'm telling you, they work great together. They're like a well-oiled machine. And their finisher, I'm sorry. I, I, I've seen it do this before. I'm sorry. But if you miss and you close eyes, your blink, it's over. That's how fast the finisher is. And knock on wood, nobody has gotten injured from the finisher because it looks very devastating. But it's effective. For them, and I and, and with Aussie Open, if they do make other appearances, I, I think they gonna... have been for a while. They have been for a while, so right? Not... But 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 I think they see something, and don't quote me on this. In Canada, for Forbidden Door. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I just wasn't as into this as I should have been because of the fact that it was very predictable. You of course they're going to be a forbidden door. They're the champions. Why wouldn't they be a forbidden door? They're the champions. Um, I don't know. I just wasn't as into this as I wanted to be, mainly because it's 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 getting late and it was very predictable. I had a hard problem. I had a problem with that being so predictable. Uh, if it was a non-title match, then at least mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been so predictable. Because of the title match, it kind of ruined the fun for me. Mm -hmm. Being like, like, okay, cool, whatever. They won. We moved on. Um, then um, Tony Schiavone's in the ring, FTR comes out, and um, the pop of them are pretty damn cool. Their entrance is terrible for taking photos, by the way. <laughs> I'm making note of that, so that's why I have no real interest in pictures of their entrance because their interest is terrible for that. But um, they came out, they cut a promo, and um, they announced officially that they've resigned for four more years. But they're at when their contract expires, they will be retiring from the wrestling business. It's a big deal. Uh, that broke news all over the place when that happened. Um, overall, though, this is cool, and we have some that, that was fun, and that was pretty much the whole segment. And then, but probably didn't, but that will make air on Rampage will be when they were celebrating with the crowd, and then TK came out, and um, and I think it was Cat Wild or Cat, Cat hugged him for some reason, we don't know why. Um, <laughs> so that happened. Move on, we had um, I mean, Sakawa come out for a match and talk about dead, no one gave a fuck about Amy Sakawa. I didn't care either, but holy crap, the crowd did not give a shit. But um, but they knew if he's coming out, that means we're gonna have something interesting. And Taya Valkyrie came out, and that got a big pop. And so we had a match: yeah. Taya Valkyrie versus Amy Sakura. Um, Jay Cardhill came out, and that got a big pop with Layla Gray. Um, Valkyrie obviously won with the Road to Bahala, and then um, Gray attacked Val Valkyrie, and um, then she got hit with the Road to Bahala, and then, then Jay Cardhill went to attack Taya, and she had um. Taya with Jaded, which I was very surprised that they would show it on television that she could have dated on Taya. Uh, I was very surprised about that. So I guess we're going to have a match eventually. And I'm not going to lie, I won't be shocked if they have Taya be Jade. I'm not going to be shocked if they do it. Dad, your thoughts? Yes. I, I think that's going to happen. I think that's why everything went the way it did for storyline is they're setting up that Jade and her attorney uh, has filed. Some you know, no, but they've already moved on. We moved on from that already. That's already over. We moved on from it already. Right. So basically, it so basically, it is who's got the best finisher. You're capping my finisher. So now let's see who does have the best finisher, and we're going to have a match, and it will be for Jade's title. And Jade, I'm sorry, my dear, the age of Jade is over. Um. I, okay, so one last thing we had the main event, and this is actually when we left. It was um, Jack Perry 
we got the new Tarzan boy versus Sean Spears, who apparently is back at the Perfect Ten gimmick, and I don't know why. Um, and um, we had that happen, and we left during the match because we wanted to be traffic. And um, Jack Perry did win. Don't have a clue what happened in the match. We didn't see it, so I can't really comment on a match we didn't see. Um, and then apparently the show kept going because we left just around ten fifteen ish. We left around ten fifteen. Yep. Apparently, right after Rampage, they put the R Wish stuff back up. And we had two more matches. And it was um Vikingo um, Viking versus um, Gringo Loco. And Vikingo beat Gringo Loco for the Pendium AAA Mega Championship. And then they had um Tekeska come out and beat Lee Moriarty. Apparently, the show didn't end until after 11.30. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. The long show. Oh, yeah. That was the show. Um, two quick notes before we end this, before we get out of here. Two notes so fast. First of all, between um, Dynamite Rampage, we had a kid in the crowd that was holding up a sign. that said, if I can get on TV, I'll get mm-hmm. a puppy. Justin Roberts brought him and his brother into the ring, so that was a cute moment. And yeah. uh, before the show, uh, I forgot to mention this at the top of the show, we were walking around the arena, and we mm-hmm. ran into the stand that was um, for AEW Healed, which is an all-female thing that they do from mm-hmm. the Friday Road Saturday, and now they're keeping going with it. And Leva Bates is in charge of it. And so uh, Mandy re-signed up for it. They lowered the price, by the way, for those wondering. They lowered the price a lot. So we'll go back and look into it. And um, she ended up getting a picture with Leva Bates. And Leva Bates was a freaking sweetheart. So that, that was really, really cool. Um, any other notes that you want to talk about before we get out of here? Um, yeah, I, I I would have loved for them to do things just a little bit different and not make the show as long as it has because as it gets longer – you lose a lot of the audience. And so, I mean, if you're going to do something where you're going to put back-to-back shows on, my suggestion, have an earlier start time. And that's I, what I'm I, saying. I, I can't argue with that point at all. Um, well, that was AW, Dynamite, and Rampage, and Ring of Honor for this week. Again, sorry for the lack of spoiler warning before we went into Rampage. Um because by the time people hear this, if it's, if it is this week's Ring of Honor show, you already saw it. If it's not, it's next week's, and I don't really care if we got spoiled because you probably know the results anyway. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, you probably know the results if you really want to know them. Oh, geez. So we're going to end here. We're going to close it out with Dr. Taya Valkyrie's theme music because I thought it was fantastic. So I figured it'd be a great way to end the show. Oh, shit. I forgot one okay. segment. Yeah, I forgot a whole segment. Yeah. Sorry. I completely forgot I... one whole big segment. Um, with JAS coming out during Rampage. And um, JAS came out and they started doing a rap to mock the Oh, acclaimed. yeah. To mock the acclaimed. And then the acclaimed came out to do a rap. We didn't get an acclaimed rap, but we got them beating up the JAS. Um, I'm not going to, we're not going to, I'm not going to get into the rap. I have the video. I will put it up on my TikTok and our Instagram, but I'm not going to put it up until Saturday. Mainly because I don't want to get in trouble for putting spoilers up for Rampage early. But mm-hmm. um, so don't watch it on Rampage tonight or watch the video. I'm going to put it up um, tomorrow. Um, and then one other thing I forgot to bring up because it wasn't in the notes was um, okay. that weird segment with um, SAP, whatever the hell the AMF faction is, and Mark Briscoe, Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, and Sanjum Singh. That was Oh, yeah. I, I didn't really care about it, but we got to see Mark Briscoe, so that was pretty cool. This one's all out there. We got the same Uh There may be a storyline developing within that faction, and we'll see where it plays out. But I don't think Mark Briscoe is one hundred percent satisfied with his quote unquote faction friends. So we'll see where this goes, and no. if it goes where I think it's going to go, it's either he's going to face J or Double J, whichever the case is, and basically tell them. Thank you, but no thank you. Slap nuts. You had to hit that in, didn't you? You had to put that yes, in. Yes, I did. Uh, well, there. Now we can wrap things up. As well, there was two things we missed, and there we go. Now we can wrap up. Um, so we'll hit the music. Um, I guess actually before I actually actually realize before I hit the music, because Sal is not here to do his thing. Instead of okay. hitting it, I will do this. For more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media or watch the show on YouTube, go to theblakeandsalshow.com. Don't forget to comment or leave a rating and review, and we will read it on the show. So there you go. I'm Dad. Go on to say your thing. Go. Hey, as always, it's been your pleasure. And if you happen to have a local independent wrestling organization where you live, 
please patronize these people. These are the young men and women coming up in the world of professional wrestling, sports entertainment. They want to entertain you. They want to show you what they can do, how they're able to act, cut great promos to go to that next level, to be on a nationwide organization so you can hone more of the craft and be successful pro wrestling superstar. So please go patronize these people. You'll be amazed on, on, on what happens and how they can do it. And just remember, hey, we all got to be nice to each other. This is the one world we got. Don't have another world. So basically, a little act of kindness goes a long way. Um. Yeah, I, I will say, go, go go look at your local indie. So you can see the wrestlers on Dynamite. You can actually see your favorite wrestler show up at Rampage against squashed by people. Here you go. Next week, Sal will be back with me, and we're going to have a special crossover event with Mandy and Nadine for my birthday week. I'm not getting into what it is. It's a big surprise, so go tune in next week for that. Um. That being said, let's get out of here. I'm Mike. I'm Mark. And you've been listening to The Blinkers House Show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Hey, we love you guys. All of our fans, even if it's just 11 of you. Hey, we want more. The moment you step in the ring with La Loca, you're hoping to cause me the typo. Yeah. Look in my eyes and you'll see the legacy started by Pedro Aguayo. Uh-huh. The reason the people are saying my name. Yeah. Ain't no slowing down. Ain't no stopping me. Uh-huh. Guess who's back around? Guess who's got the keys? Start it up. Start it up. Yeah. Yeah. Soon as I put it in drive. That's what they say when I take it to cure number five. Ain't no slowing down. Ain't no stopping me. Stop me. Uh-huh. Guess who's back around? Guess who's got the keys? Start it up, start it up. Yeah. As soon as I put it in drive, that's what they say when I take it secure number five. Thank you so very much. Goodbye and good night. Bye-bye, bitch. <laughs>